Today we'll be talking about lasers, Arduino laser transmitter and Arduino laser receiver, to be precise. Those modules are very easy to control, so I had to come up with an interesting project to make it an interesting watch. I was thinking for a while and... I decided I'll make Arduino laser morse code decoder to go with Arduino laser morse code encoder I did in one of my videos. This project falls into the category of useless projects and those are my favorite because you have plenty of fun making them, you feel great about yourself when they work and you learn a lot of new things in the process. So if you want to tag along for this one, stick around. So here are the modules we'll use in this project. Laser transmitter and laser receiver. Before we have a closer look at those two modules, a little bit of history how we got here and why I want to use these modules for Morse code transmission. Ages ago I created the video which allowed to input text and translate it to Morse code sound and light signals. Virtually straight away I started working on the project to translate Morse code signal back to text. First I tried to use photoresistor to react to light intensity changes. I had few major obstacles. I quickly realized that I would need to use concentrated light, like flashlight, for this to work. And still, the light doesn't really go off immediately but rather dims out. That made recognizing the start and end of the signal super difficult. It would only work when the signals like dots and dashes were long enough, e.g. one second for a dot, three seconds for a dash. If you had shorter signals, that simply would not have worked. The additional difficulty was that the photoresistor was returning analog input and not just high and low signals. So there was additional coding required to detect among changes in light intensity where the signal starts and when the signal ends. I eventually used this photoresistor module that provides digital input and built-in potentiometer that allows you to configure light intensity above which the module returns high signal. But the first limitation still applied here. Then I tried sound sensor. And here again I realized that recognizing sound signals, which are very short and very close to each other, is a challenge. When I tried this transmission in my workshop or in my living room, the, the echo, echo was, was killing, killing any, any chance, chance for this, this to be a success. success. And here I hit one more hurdle, I guess more difficult than the others. The constant beeps of the buzzer were driving my missus up the wall. And she said that it will be either her or the buzzer. So that left me no choice than to look for an alternative. And that's when I came up with laser modules, which emit concentrated lights. They provide distinct on and off states. They potentially allow you to work with fairly long distances. There were cases of laser pointers blinding a pilots of incoming jets. This made these modules ideal for this kind of project. Whether I am right, we are yet to see. So let's go back to our modules. Starting with a laser transmitter. The connectivity is super simple. We need two jumper wires to connect the module ground to Arduino ground. The middle pin is not used. We connect module signal pin to any Arduino digital pin. Now we can control the laser diode just like you would control any normal LED. Let's load the standard blink sketch and run the program. And there you have it. Now let's look at the laser receiver module which will be the key component of our laser decoder. Connectivity is also that simple. We have three jumper wires to connect ground, VCC and signal. In this project we are planning to use interrupts, so we need to connect the signal to either digital pin 2 or digital pin 3, as those are the only pins for Arduino Uno or Nano that provide interrupt functionality. When you order this part, the sensor comes not connected to the board, so please be careful and plug it in the right way. This is the right way the sensor should be plugged in. You do it other way around and the sensor will go up in smoke. Believe me, I've been there.
Now that we have receiver connected, we can look at the code. I will start with the most basic code that will read the signal from the laser receiver and display its current state in the serial monitor. We need the variable that will be used to capture the state of the sensor. We also need to define the pin to which the laser sensor is connected. In setup, we open the serial monitor and also configure the laser pin as input. In loop, we read the state of the sensor with digital read and save it to laser detected variable, which we then output to serial monitor using print method. Let's see how this works. When there is no laser detected, we see zero being output. Each time we point the laser beam at the sensor, we see one in the serial monitor. Let's slightly improve this simple project by adding LED connected to digital pin 5. All we need to do now is to define the LED pin, set it as an output and add an if statement that will be sending high or low signals to the LED pin depending on the reading from the laser receiver. Will it work? It does. If we swap signals inside the if statement, we in fact just created the simplest tripwire project. If the laser is pointed at the receiver and we break the laser line, we activate the alarm. In our case, we turn on the LED, but we could easily replace it with the buzzer. So we have a simple project using these two laser modules out of the way. But if you want to create the Morse code decoder, you need to do more than just detect if the laser signal exists. Morse code transmission consists of dots and dashes, which have a different duration. So we also need to measure signal's length to determine whether it is a dot or a dash. This is the perfect opportunity to put your interrupt skills to use. If you have not used interrupts before, it is time for you to check this video of mine. Let's go back to our code to make necessary changes so it is detecting and displaying signal length in the serial monitor. We no longer need laser detect variable and we'll get rid of the LED. All lines of code in loop functions are not relevant anymore. We would need two new variables. Start variable would store the timestamp at which the laser signal has started. We use unsigned long data type as we'll use the milis function to get the timestamps and it returns values in that precise format. Then we have end variable that would store the timestamp at which the signal has ended. And finally, signal len variable which would store the duration of the signal. In setup function, we add the interrupt which would react to changes to signal at laser pin. And when that happens, the interrupt signal routine called signal change would be executed. Let's build this ISR and see how it works. Here is the graph showing how the signal at laser pin changes in time. The starting point is the timestamp at which Arduino started running current program. Whenever we execute Mealy's function, we get the exact time that passed since that initial moment. At the start of the program, there is no laser signal detected, so the laser receiver outputs low signal. If the change is detected, in the ISR we have an if statement that checks if the signal has changed from low to high. So when finally there is a laser signal detected and we have high signal at the laser pin, the code of the loop function is interrupted and we execute ISR. In it, in the if statement, we detect that it is a change from low to high. That means that it is the beginning of the laser signal. And in this case, we capture the timestamp with milis and save it to start variable. Execution of ISR is finished and we return to the loop function code to where we left off. When the laser signal finishes, another change at laser pin is detected. ISR kicks in again. This time the change is from high to low, so we execute else part of the if statement. This time we also run milis to capture the timestamp, but this time we save it to end variable. Now that we have start time and end time of the signal, we can calculate its duration and save it to signal len variable. Simple. Let's add the ISR to our code. The initial value of the signal len variable is zero. 
If the laser signal is detected and the ISR is processed for both start and end of the signal, signal len variable has a different value now. In loop function, we can detect such change and in this case, we can output to the serial monitor information about signal start, end, and its duration. And when it is done, we reset the signal len variable back to zero, so it is ready for next incoming laser signals. Let's see how this code would work. As you can see, each time I point a laser beam at the sensor, nothing happens. But when I move it away, we get the information about the start, end, and the duration of the laser signal. Please note that we can capture the signals that are barely several milliseconds in length. So we are now able to detect the length of the laser signal. But we also need to be able to measure a duration of the pulse in between signals, as the length of that pulse helps us detect whether the transmission of the current letter or word is concluded. Let's look at the time graph at the point where we left off. We would need one more variable, pause len. After the laser signal finished, we are moving along the timeline until we reach the next change from low to high. In this case, we update the start variable with Mili's function. And now we can calculate the pause duration by subtracting add variable from start variable. In the loop, we need to add similar section for pause len like we did for signal len. So whenever pause len is greater than zero, we are outputting pulse information to the serial monitor. And at the end, we reset pulse len back to zero. Let's see how this would work. The code also reports the laser signal length, but also provides information about start, end, and duration of each pulse in between signals, which is great. I don't know if you notice a problem in my code. For pause data, this value is actually the timestamp of when the pause ended. And this one is the timestamp of when the pause began. And they should be swapped around. So with the sketches we created in this video, we built essential building blocks that will be used to write the code of the Morse code laser decoder. I have not even started writing that code yet. And with this bottom-up strategy, I cannot even be 100% sure whether it's going to work. Sure, it looks promising, but it also might be a complete disaster. So if you want to check if I will be able to transfer information from one Arduino to the other using laser modules, you have to check the part 2 of this video, which will be released in a week or so. And with this suspense in the air, I'm out of here. Thank you for watching. Shout out to all my patrons. And I will see you in my next video. Ciao.